Rabbity boopy. Che cosa? Peter, what are you doing? Speaking Italian. Everyone loves pizza, pasta, and gelato. Unfortunately, your friendly neighborhood Italian chef might be ripping you off. Here are 10 sneaky ways Italian restaurants are scamming you. Step three, I put it on some pasta. And that's the recipe! The olive oil might be subpar. Anchovy fillets and virgin olive oil. Everyone knows that the best kind of olive oil is extra virgin olive oil. However, there's a good chance you're being duped at your local Italian restaurant. You might think you're drizzling high-quality extra virgin olive oil on your bruschetta, but in reality, it's probably the cheap stuff. If you want the real deal, you'll need to head over to Costco, or better yet, a local Italian market you trust. Olive oil is serious business, and the best olive oil is extremely pricey. There are plenty of Italian chefs out there looking to make a quick buck by cutting corners. There's nothing worse than getting scammed and ending up with a bitter and pungent knockoff. That's right, the olive oil at some Italian eateries might not even be actual olive oil at all. Instead, it might just be a mixture of inferior vegetable oils disguised with a fake olive oil-esque aroma. And it sounds like some of these scheming Italian chefs need some sense knocked into them by an Italian grandmother. According to Forbes, as much as 80% of so-called Italian olive oil is fake. Fake olive oil is such a lucrative business that it has attracted an unsavory crowd. That's right, it seems that organized crime is squeezing in and making obscene amounts of money importing fake olive oil. Unacceptable! Now, we've heard about counterfeiting money, but counterfeit olive oil? Who would have thought? The bufala mozzarella probably isn't authentic. My tasty baked ziti with basil and fresh mozzarella. Not everyone can make a bufala mozzarella as good as Artie Bucco from The Sopranos. There's a good chance that the matza at your local Italian eatery isn't the real deal. The chef may claim it's authentic, but it probably isn't. Authentic bufala mozzarella is made of milk from the coveted black horned Asian water buffalo. The matza on your margarita pizza was probably made with plain old cow's milk. Cow's milk matza tastes perfect perfectly fine, don't get us wrong, but it lacks the creaminess and slight sour taste of authentic bufala mozzarella. If you see real Italian mozzarella on the menu at your local Italian joint, you should probably be skeptical, especially if it doesn't cost an arm and a leg. Authentic bufala mozzarella fetches a high price. Some foodies say it's more valuable than gold. That sounds expensive. This is why fake bufala mozzarella producers are cashing in. It's not uncommon to see cow's milk mozzarella labeled as bufala mozzarella. You're not safe at an Italian restaurant, the supermarket, or your local Italian grocery store. In fact, you could even be duped in Italy. The Italian government conducted research and found out that 25% of the country's bufala mozzarella contained cow's milk. Now that's a national tragedy. Cheap fungus instead of high-end truffles? Come on, you didn't even notice a truffle? How do you afford truffle? I don't. It's truffle oil. If you don't have a truffle pig to sniff out the real deal, you'll have to rely on your local Italian restaurant to get your fix. Unfortunately, you might be getting duped. Those delicate white truffles on your pasta might not be high-end truffles at all. Instead, you might be scarfing down cheap Tunisian fungus. Fake, 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 fake. <laughs> Unless you have a personal truffle stick. Stash, there might not be any way to avoid this. You can easily be tricked into eating an inferior fungus at any Italian restaurant, even if it has three Michelin stars. Truffle swapping is a real problem, and lax rules make it easy for some Italian chefs to serve up an inferior product, whether intentional or not. You see, it takes a real expert to sniff out a world-class truffle. Take the world-renowned Piedmont white truffle, for example. This gastronomical delight Light hails from the Piedmont region in Italy and is so sought after by foodies that it can range in price from $2,700 to $6,800 per kilo. These truffles are so highly in demand that they're even sold on the black market. You might think your carbonara is topped with Piedmont truffles, but the truth is there's no way of knowing for sure. There are reports that up to 75% of Piedmont truffles on the market aren't what they claim to be. They're probably not from Piedmont.
Piedmont, and maybe not even from Italy. Unless you're a truffle expert yourself, there's really no way of knowing for sure. Watch out for the Parmesan cheese. I bet she orders the eggplant Parmesan like it's something fancy. Who doesn't love Parmesan cheese? It goes great on pasta and Caesar salad. It's even yummy enough to eat by the slice. You can even enjoy it as a midnight snack. When it comes to Parmesan, the best of the best is Parmigiano Reggiano. It's not called the king of cheeses for nothing. However, there's a good chance you'll never get to try it for yourself. If you see it on the menu at your favorite Italian restaurant, there's a good chance you're getting scammed. For Parmigiano Reggiano to be the real deal, it has to come from Italy and be made with milk from the Parma Reggio region. You think you could milk me? Most of the Parmesan cheese in America doesn't come from Italy. Instead, it probably comes from the Midwest. That Wisconsin-made Parmesan may taste heavenly, but it doesn't hold a candle to high-end Italian Parmigiano Reggiano. Authentic Parmigiano Reggiano has a distinct savory flavor thanks to salt and rennet from calf intestines that's used in the recipe. Yes, you heard that right, calf intestines. American-made Parmesan cheese tastes pretty bland in comparison. There are plenty of Italian chefs who have no problem passing off American-made Parmesan as 100% authentic Parmigiano Reggiano. Unless you have a degree in food history, you probably had no idea that people took Parmesan cheese so seriously. As we keep moving on, take a second to hit that like button, would ya? Thank you. Next! Watch out for the fishing waiter scam if you're in Italy. First time? First time for you? First time? Yes. <laughs> Here's a tip to all you world travelers out there. If you're visiting Italy, make sure you watch out for the fishing waiter scam. What's that, you might ask? Well, that's when a waiter stands outside a restaurant and tries to lure you inside. If a restaurant is truly amazing, the owners won't have to hawk their food on the street. If the waiter is begging you to come inside, then the food and service might be subpar. It might seem obvious, but you'd be surprised how many suckers fall for this scam. Those Italian waiters can be sneaky, and they can spot a susceptible American tourist with a fanny pack filled with cash and credit cards from a mile away. You're better off checking out the online reviews on sites like TripAdvisor and Yelp if you're looking for a good place to eat when you're in Rome. Yeah, but I'm kind of teetering on five stars or one star. You can trust the waiter as much as you can trust a politician. They might claim the pizza is the best in Italy, but they're probably lying. If you're looking for a great place to eat, ask a local. Another way to find a great restaurant is to watch out for lines. If there's a lineup to get into the restaurant, you can bet your entire paycheck that it's probably a high quality restaurant. Don't tip if you're in Italy. We don't accept it, formally. It's always important to leave a big tip if the service and food was up to par. You want the chef and waiter to know that your plate of pasta was magnificent. However, you shouldn't tip if you're at a restaurant in Italy. Tipping is customary in the United States and Canada, but in Italy, it's not required. If the waiter tells you that you have to leave a big tip, then you're being scammed. That being said, tipping isn't completely off the table in Italy. It's not like in Japan, where tipping is seen as rude. In Italy, you should only tip if the service was phenomenal. If you're dining at a three-star Michelin restaurant, it's okay to tip. Tipping is much more commonplace at very high-end restaurants in Italy. Even so, you should never tip more than 10 or 15 percent. If you're in Venice and want to thank the barista for that tremendous cappuccino, you can tell them to keep the change. That's the Italian way. There's no need to open your wallet for more cash. Keep that that money or go on a shopping spree at Via del Corso in Rome. Sounds good to me! Waiters are paid a reasonable salary in Italy. It's not like in the U.S. where waiters need tips to survive. Don't be duped into forking over more money if you don't have to. The gelato might be a ripoff. You're under arrest for veganity violation. 
I wasn't vegan. Has this ever happened to you? You finish a nice meal at a high-end Italian restaurant and the waiter brings you the dessert menu. The pistachio gelato catches your eye. How could you go wrong? It's a little pricey, but it sounds delicious, so you splurge. Well, we hate to break it to you, but you were probably ripped off. Gelato is often marked up by a ridiculous degree, and most Italian restaurants serve the cheap store-bought stuff anyway. The menu may say the gelato is artisanal, but that doesn't really mean anything. It's just a fancy word to dupe unsuspecting customers. Gelato is pretty much just cream, milk, eggs, and flavoring. It shouldn't be expensive. In fact, that artisanal gelato might just have been water in a prepackaged dry mix. If that pistachio gelato was bright green, it probably wasn't authentic homemade gelato. If it looks fake, it's probably too good to be true. If the strawberry gelato looks like bright red lipstick, then there's a very good chance it's packed full of artificial coloring. Easy peasy. If you want to make sure your gelato contains natural ingredients, keep an eye out for a softer color palette. If it looks natural, then it probably is. You don't have to be a dessert expert to spot cheap store-bought gelato. Fake gelato is easier to spot than a bad toupee. You might be served leftovers. Let's have breakfast at my club today. They do a thing on Friday called Yesterday's Potatoes. Leftovers are great at home, but you wouldn't want to be served leftovers at a restaurant. Unfortunately, there are plenty of cheap chefs out there who are willing to cut corners and pass that frozen lasagna off as fresh out of the oven. There's nothing worse than saving up money for a nice Italian meal only to be duped by day-old leftovers. Two thumbs down. Honest chefs use high-quality, fresh ingredients. In fact, that's the number one rule when it comes to Italian cooking. However, not everyone out there is as honest as you might think. There are plenty of Italian chefs willing to pull a fast one over on us. So what's a foodie to do? How can you be sure you're not being served leftovers? Well, unfortunately, there's not much you can do, but there are a few dishes you should avoid. These dishes are very often made with leftovers. For starters, Starters, avoid stuffed pasta shells. Chefs will often stuff the shells with less than fresh, unused ingredients and then mask the flavor with mountains of sauce. You should also steer clear of spaghetti with meatballs. The ground beef used to make the meatballs could have been sitting in the freezer for a very long time. Watch out for anything on the menu that's labeled on special. That's usually just a fancy way of saying, we couldn't sell it before and we're hoping a sucker like you will order it before it goes bad. The margarita pizza might be overpriced. The margarita with onion and pineapple what? number 17, thank you. Who doesn't love margarita pizza? It's easily one of the most popular items at any Italian restaurant, and for good reason. It is the best. It's tasty, affordable, and actually authentic, unlike Hawaiian pizza, but that's a separate argument for another day. However, you might actually be getting ripped off when you order a margarita pizza. You're probably thinking to yourself, how is that possible? Margarita pizzas are so cheap, they can't possibly be a ripoff. Well, unfortunately, they are. They cost so little because the ingredients cost practically nothing. A margarita pizza is just dough, basil, tomato sauce, and mozzarella. It's so easy to make, even the worst chef on Kitchen Nightmares could make one. We hate to break it to you, but margarita pizzas are marked up considerably. Italian chefs could charge a lot less for this pizza and still make a tidy profit. That $20 margarita pizza probably only cost four bucks to make. Yikes! Now you can see how margarita pizzas are a ripoff. If you want to get your money's worth at your local pizzeria, order pizzas that you can't make at home. The more complicated, the better. That way you'll know you're getting your money's worth. Skip the wine and save some money. I'd like your $8-est bottle of wine, please. If you're in the mood for some libations with your pasta, you should be on guard. You can't always trust the sommelier at your local Italian eatery. It's easy to get scammed when it comes to wine. Most wine are marked up quite a bit, and we're not talking a few dollars here either. You're very likely to pay two to four times more at an Italian restaurant for a bottle of Chianti than you would at the liquor store. In the words of Bart Simpson, Caramba. If you want to avoid being ripped off, download an app that lets you choose
check the retail price of wine. That way you'll know if you're being fleeced. Here's another tip. Always order wine by the bottle. There's no bigger ripoff than a single glass of wine. Better yet, skip the booze altogether. That's not good for you anyway. You're better off sticking with a nice bottle of San Pellegrino or an Italian soda. Trust me when I say this. Get a taste of more great videos. Just tap or click, hit that subscribe button, and ring that bell to join our notification squad. And hey, leave us a comment.